Good morning, everybody. Oh, I think it's morning. Yeah, no, it is. Uh, today, I decided to do the Yasmina backpack. Um, it's got a lot of cool stuff. This fabric actually came from the UK. Uh, so I will put a link to where to get this because it's got skulls. Since we're coming into Halloween, it's got skull flowers and I just, I think it's fabulous. Um, so this bag has perfect size panel to do embroidery on the front. Uh, it's got a top zipper that opens a lot so that you can like really get into your bag. Then on the inside, we've got a slip pocket. We've got a zipper pocket on this side. Um, and it's all box corners, which made it pretty quick to make. Um, I also really love that skull. How cool is that? I don't know. I'm having a skull week, I think. Anyway, so if you would like to see how to make this bag. Oh, this is the small, by the way. So if you want to see how to make the bag, I made it slightly different from the pattern. Uh, because this is the construction that I like. So if you'd like to see an alternate way to make the same bag, please stay tuned. Alright, so let's get started. I'm going to start with my straps. Now, I am using a vinyl I got ages ago from Spotlight, I think. Um, it's shiny patent pink, which looks amazing and is hell to work with. Because it's a patent shiny one it tends to be super sticky however nothing will defeat me and i only have a little bit left and i just decided it went really well with this fabric so i am going to attempt to sew it now a trick with super sticky stuff there's a couple of different things you can do uh teflon foot definitely helps or teflon tape on your favorite foot um you can also depending on how horrible it's being, you can also put tissue paper between the needle and the, or the foot and the vinyl. Uh, what else can you do? Baby powder, but I don't recommend that unless you're going to clean out your sewing machine directly after because it gets filled with powder and will go cloggy. Um, or a walking foot. A walking foot would definitely help as well. So they are some of the ways that you can combat the problem. I will be using none of those because I'm just going to make it work. The way I'm going to personally make it work is we're going to kind of help push it under and we're going to sew very slowly. There will be no speed sewing um, when it's just the vinyl because it get, does get clogged and then your stitches won't look even. I'm still letting my fingers rest from the fake nails because they are still quite sore, to be honest. Uh, which also means this is probably going to take longer because I don't have them to help me. That's right. So I'm just folding both sides into the centre for anyone that's never watched one of my videos before. Um, and if you do it at the same time, you kind of pinch it and it naturally falls to the middle. So I don't have to draw that line. And I can do both sides at the same time, which is, you know, always glorious. Now I could just do my straps like this, uh, but I'm going to put the, vine, uh, the fabric accent on top because I like this fabric. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, you can mix and match all of these different things from different patterns. So this is skinnier than this. So this is one inch and this is three quarters of an inch. And I did that deliberately too. So what we're going to do, I'm going to chop off the white bit. We don't need that. And then I'm just going to tuck under the raw edge so that we won't have any. And now I'm going to put the join side up. And I'm going to start right at the edge. Now, I want a nice long stitch, so I'm going up to four, which theoretically means four millimeter. All right, so I've done three stitches, and now I'm going to go back through the first stitch. I'm gonna hold this in the center, and I'm gonna stitch an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric. Now, this is gonna take a lot longer due to my lack of nails, but that's okay. Now, because there's feed dogs on the bottom, the vinyl at the moment will go through quite nicely because I'm stitching and my foot is on the fabric. 
So I shouldn't have too many kind of sticking problems yet. Doesn't mean they're not coming, just means they're not here yet. And then I haven't cut these to size, I just did a whole strip of fabric. Uh, so I'm just going to chop a little bit past the end. That bit's now rubbish. Tuck under that raw edge again so that there's no fraying. Needle down, pivot. And twist the whole thing around and then I'm going to go back up the other side. Now again, I'm not going to go super fast. Normally I would, uh, but... I want my stitches to be even and I don't want the vinyl to get stuck. I can't feel any issues, but it's still not worth going fast and wrecking it. And then across the bottom and back stitch. And trim off your tails. That is one strap. It looks very red in the camera from what I can see, but it is it is a nice pink. All right, so I'm gonna do the same to the other one. And yes, I could fizzle the, uh, the uh, camera out so you don't watch me do a second one, but you know, I might come up with something, or something might happen that I can teach you how to fix. So I just record the whole lot. This fabric actually came all the way from the UK to be with me. Um, I will put a link to the shop in the description for you all. So I used, this is the small size. Um, and I used half a metre of lining and half a metre of the exterior. There's a little bit more of the exterior fabric left. Um, but I pretty much used all of it. I could probably get a wallet out of the remaining exterior fabric. And a small zipper pocket out of the lining. But not enough for a Tory pocket. It's just a little bit left. Now this is actually folding over and sticking quite well, which was nice. I didn't really expect that. Okay, I'm going to chop this end. Because the other one's a bit wonky. So we don't want to use the wonky end. This is the end I started on. So if you can see, I used a, um, a bias tool and it's a bit wonky here. So if I won't be using that. But rather than accidentally cutting it too short, I'd rather just start from the other end. So, tuck under the raw edge. Oh, I tucked under the little skull. You can also um, sew the short edge first, if that's what you prefer. So that that whole thing is down. It doesn't matter really where you start. I do tend to start in a corner though, and not halfway through the strap. That's obviously weird. You can do it, I suppose, but it feels like a lot of extra effort. So I'm using my fingers as clips. Uh, you could also clip this if you wanted to. Get um, some wonder clips and just clip them both together. down. I'm just going to chop off again the excess at the end, tuck under that raw edge. There's lots of different ways to do straps. Uh, this is just my, this is my go-to method actually. You 
just want to make sure you haven't run out of bottom thread. The um, vinyl so far is not playing up as much as I thought it was going to. Alright, so that is that done. I'm also now going to take my strap adjusters. I opted for rose gold because when I put it against the fabric, I just thought it was pretty. No other reason at all. Um, and I'm thinking instead of stitching it, I might put a rivet because, I don't know, I feel like doing rivets today. I have an assortment of everything here at the moment. Two of those. I've got different sizes in here. I know that shouldn't surprise anyone. I used to have them all in different sections, but I ran out of sections, so they all got kind of joined together. So I'm just going to pop this under and create a hole. I'm going to make sure that that's even though, so it's not going to sit crooked, because we do not want that. Push that one on. And before I get rid of this, I'm going to do the second one as well. Um, so if you've only got one press, you obviously do both of them. Now, I'm just going to line these up so that they are even. A little bit more. Um, that's a little bit long. This is the best way that you can match them up. Squish a hole. Like so. Then you can change your dies or change your press. And squish them down. One. And two. Excellent. So they are now done. I'm going to put them aside till later. I don't need them yet. So now I'm going to go in with the lining. Um, I've made these. I just made little things so that I could tell. I'm going to see how much I can get done without reading the pattern. I've had a good look at it. I feel like that counts. Uh, so this is going to be the slip pocket. So the idea is that we're going to fold this in half with the wrong sides together, like this. And this is the width of the actual thing, so we don't need to seal these sides. They'll go into the side seam, which makes it much easier. I'm going to use some vinyl at the top for my accent to join it. Uh, you don't have to do this. You could put it right sides together, stitch it, and pull it through the side so that you didn't have the accent. Or you could use a fabric accent where you do a double fold instead of a single one like this. I'm just creating a crease to make it easier to kind of slip over that edge. Now, again, this is potentially going to hate me because of the stickiness of the vinyl. But I am still going to try it anyway. It's not impossible to do, but if you go too fast, you'll find that your stitches aren't as long as they're trying to be. So these are supposed to be a, a full length. I can tell you right now that they are not. But that's why I've left it on a long stitch. It's getting a little bit stuck. So in a perfect world, I would use a machine with a walking foot for this vinyl. So think about that if you're ever going to buy a shiny vinyl. They're not always your friend. Right. However, we got there. There is now a slip pocket. Before we attach it, these are our main lining panels. Um, I believe I'll probably have to measure up. It'll have to sit up here somewhere. Actually, I could just kind of put it there, really. Near the top, but not so close that it's in the way. You don't want to put it all the way to the bottom because we're going to box the corner, I believe. or we'll box the bottom of the bag. So, I'm just going to line this up. I'm going to pull... Let's do it. I'm going to do it 
there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch this bottom edge to hold the pocket on. I'm going to go back to a joining stitch length, uh, which for me is two and a half, for anyone that doesn't know that. Needle down. We're going to pivot and I'm going to just attach the side here. I didn't want it too close to the top. That would be an annoying slip pocket. But I also don't want it too far down. Because uh, then it'll end up in the base. Or you can just read the pattern and it'll tell you where to put it. There's that option too. I like to wing things a little bit more though. So that actually blends in pretty well. But the vinyl accent shows you where the slip pocket is. So now we're going to take our other pocket. Now I'm doing this pocket differently because I'm doing a Tory pocket. Not that that should surprise anybody. So I'm going to come up near the top and I'm going to use any ruler I can find, which for the moment is this one. And I'm just going to make sure that it's sitting evenly because that is important. So I said there. And there. Excellent. Right. So that's now sitting even. Just making sure the sides are even as well. And I'm going to stitch the longest lines that I've drawn from my rectangle. Then I'm going to I'm going to make sure I back stitch at both ends because I do not want this to come undone. So we're going to stitch and back stitch, and then off we go, and then back stitch at that end as well. Pull this out, trim off the tails so that they don't annoy me. You also want to trim this jump stitch that you did at this end, because uh, it can get in the way. And then we're going to take some scissors. I'm going to, I bring it over to the edge and pinch it, because I find that's the easiest way, and then snip in the middle of our two lines. Now I'm going to try and roughly cut as best in the center as I can and then triangle out the corners. And what I mean by that is we make a triangle in the corner. Oh yeah, do that to both ends. Now you don't want your triangle to be too short because then you won't catch it when you're stitching. So at least half an inch all the way up to, you can go all the way up to a full inch, but you just want it long enough so that when this comes back, it's going to get top stitched over. So if you've got a really little triangle, you're likely to miss it and then it'll poke out later and that will annoy you. So I'm now going to go and push this pocket through like so, and then I'm going to iron it flat. So I'm just going to hit pause while I go and do the ironing. I want this to sit beautifully flat and then we'll install the zipper. So that's all lovely and ironed now. Uh, so it's sitting flat. Ignore all the fluff. I will do with that later. I have decided to use some metallic zip because, I don't know, I think it looks cool. And I'm using a rose gold zip, so I'm just going to crack the zip a couple of inches. You don't want to do it the whole way, that creates drama. Then I'm going to put one side on, and then I look down kind of the barrel of the, not gun, but zipper. And you just want to line the teeth up and then kind of push from the top, and then your zipper should just go on. However... I can also see, I don't know, let me move the zipper pull out of the way. See how it's got like a, a little kind of bump on this side? That means it's not actually as even as I was hoping. So I am, that whole bump was from one tooth difference. And we don't want that. There we go. So now that I've put it on, you can see that it sits evenly. There's not one side bulging more than the other. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to put the zip out kind of roughly in the middle of the zip. You don't want to put it too close to the end. And I'm going to have mine closing to the left. And then I'm just going to take this, making sure that the pocket's open and flat, and lay it over the zipper, like so. And I'm going to start in front of the zipper 
in the direction that it's going. So if you've got your zipper going the other way, turn all of this and start on the other side. And I'm just going to stitch all the way around. Now when you're doing those ends, you want to make sure that any kind of triangles or anything are tucked out of the way so that they're not poking out because we don't want that. Pivot down. You could have also done a zipper overlay. I just chose not to because instead I did pink sparkly zipper tape. Um, and if you want more of your tape shown, you sew the, the original lines further apart. So the Tory Pocket comes with a 3 8 of an inch hole, um, which traditionally is used for size 3 zippers. But I use it for my size 5. It still works. You just don't see a lot of the zipper tape. But that also doesn't really matter. Alright, so I'm going to let the pocket fall, and it should fall pretty much perfectly in line. And then... I'd also like to point out, I never interface this particular pocket. Um, I don't like how thick it gets when I do. So this is the only pocket I haven't, but I do not interface it because I don't like to. So then we're going to go out the other side as well. You just want to pull the main lining out of the way. And then I'm going to open it. So I'm going to zip it all the way closed and then all the way open. And now we've got our zipper pocket and the slip pockets on the other side is done. Pop that aside. Next up in my barrel of tricks, we have front center panel and the top band. So we're gonna join those two together. And then I'm gonna go to the pattern to see in what order they want the rest done. Um, but when you've got a pattern like this where it's all just measurements and you can't clip the pattern piece, it is quite handy to make little tabs. Um, and if you're going to make the pattern a lot, you laminate these and keep them. Or you can print them instead of scribbling them like I did. They don't need to be big, um, but they do help in the organisation of everything. So, right sides together. And I possibly could have done this bag with pink thread. Um... But I'm kind of happy I did it. Now, I need to check the seam allowance of this pattern. Because so far it hasn't matted. Um, I've got it here with me. So. Oh, look. If I had paid more attention, she actually has those things printed out for you. Very cool. It tells you how many to cut of each of them. And she's so clever that she didn't put the um, sizes on them so that they could be shown in videos. Bravo. Alright, so that's all lovely and ironed now. Uh, so it's sitting flat. Ignore all the fluff, I will do with that later. I have decided to use some metallic zip because, I don't know, I think it looks cool. And I'm using a rose gold zip, so I'm just going to crack the zip a couple of inches. You don't want to do it the whole way, that creates drama. Then I'm going to put one side on and then I look down kind of the barrel of the, not gun, but zipper. And you just want to line the teeth up and then kind of push from the top and then your zipper should just go on. However, I can also see, I don't know, let me move the zipper pull out of the way. See, I've got like a a little kind of bump on this side that means it's not actually as even as I was hoping so I am that whole bump was from one tooth difference and we don't want that there we go so now that I've put it on you can see that it sits evenly there's not one side bulging more than the other that's what we're looking for. So I'm going to put the zipper kind of roughly in the middle of the zip. You don't want to put it too close to the end. And I'm going to have mine closing to the left. And then I'm just going to take this, making sure that the pocket's open and flat, and lay it over the zipper, like so. And I'm going to start in front of the zipper in the direction that it's going. So if you've got your zipper going the other way, turn all of this and start on the other side. 
And I'm just going to stitch all the way around. Now when you're doing those ends, you want to make sure that any kind of triangles or anything are tucked out of the way so that they're not poking out. Because we don't want that. Pivot down. You could have also done a zipper overlay. I just chose not to because instead I did pink sparkly zipper tape. Um, and if you want more of your tape shown, you sew the, the original lines further apart. So the Tory Pocket comes with a 3 8 of an inch hole, um, which traditionally is used for size 3 zippers. But I use it for my size 5. It still works. You just don't see a lot of the zipper tape. But that also doesn't really matter. Alright, so I'm going to let the pocket fall, and it should fall pretty much perfectly in line. And then... I'd also like to point out, I never interface this particular pocket. Um, I don't like how thick it gets when I do. So this is the only pocket I haven't, but I do not interface it because I don't like to. So then we're going to go out the other side as well. You just want to pull the main lining out of the way. And then I'm going to open it. So I'm going to zip it all the way close and then all the way open. And now we've got our zipper pocket and the slip pocket right. on the other side. So, I am just going to grab my strap connectors and my handle. I'm just doing a one layered handle. So I'm going to do all of these at once. So I'm just going to kind of line them up and put the tape over all of them at once. Like so. Just because it saves a little bit of time because they're little. doesn't work as well when the pieces are super long. When they're little like this, it's much quicker. So again, these are the ones I'm going to potentially have problems with because they're all vinyl, so they're sticky. But that's okay. So these short ones are these strap connectors. You can put a reinforcement piece of stabilizer inside, uh, but because I'm using vinyl, they should be fine. This vinyl's got the fabric backing. If it was not the fabric backing, I would put a, a stabilizer piece because I find that that one's just not as strong. But sometimes they're really pretty and I have to buy them anyway. So you just reinforce them and then they're fine. Alright, so... You can either stitch in the center or the outside, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to do the outside. And again, you can notice I am going quite slowly because this hand is pushing it under. It may not look like it, but I am putting a fair amount of force to make sure that it doesn't stick. Because that's not what I'm aiming for. And well, now. If your vinyl tends to twist, what you would then do is flip it this way and start from the same end. Like that. So you'd start from this end. Because that's the end I just cut off, isn't it? I actually don't know. This one doesn't twist, so it's not a big deal. Um, but you, you don't want twisty vinyl if you can help it. I'm also going to do the handle. Squish it into the center. You're going to make sure that these centers are really touching. So that there's no gap. You can also uh, rub it on the edge of a table. Kind of helps it to sit flat. So you can either pull it or push it. To make sure it's going to go through. You just don't want to do this fast. You'll bend your needle. Slow and steady wins the race most of the time with this. And then I want to start at the same end just to avoid any potential twisting. And then I'm going to grab it once I've got enough and pull. And I 
just run out of bobbin thread. At least that was good timing. So that's going to be my little handle. It's very adorable. And these are going to be strap connectors. And I'm using uh, chunky D-rings because I wanted to use rose gold. So we'll be doing this. And I'm just going to clip them in place. It is, I don't know if you can hear that. It's actually sticky vinyl. It's not sticky to touch, but it sticks to itself, which is why you have such an issue um, sewing with it. But it's pretty, so it's worth it. It's got like this faux um, quilted look in it. You can't really see it on little bits, but big bits, it looks very cool. All right, so what do we need? We need the piece it's going to attach to. These go on. One of these pieces. Aha, backside, here we go. So we need our, no, that's not it. I just had it, there it is. Our bottom piece. So in the instructions, it tells you how much to cut out from here. Keeping in mind that if you change those dimensions, you'll just have a different size bottom. That's kind of how that works. All right. So on here, from here, now she does have in the instructions how to make this like cool and angled, but for the purposes of right now, I am actually just going to rivet it straight on because I can. You just want to make sure that they are even. So the best way to do that, fold it over, line it up. If you put this one perfectly on top of that one, like this, and then just fold this over and line up there to there, that is now perfectly lined up the same as the other side. So that's another way to do it. Again, you don't have to do it my way. That's just how I'm choosing to. So now I'm going to just uh, baste it down along that edge, and then we're going to put some rivets in it to reinforce it. Oh, I don't have any bobbin thread. Duh. All right, I'm going to wind a bobbin and then we're going to sew that. Let's try that again. So I now have a bobbin. So I'm just going to stitch that one down. And then this one down. Like so. Trim off all those tails so that they don't come back to annoy me later. Now I'm also going to have rivets um, so that this stays right where I tell it to and doesn't shift around. I'm like, where'd Scully go? Oh, also, I have ordered a bunch of Scullies because I know a lot of you guys in the comments always ask where I get them from. I have a shipment of 70 coming. So if you can just bear with me a little bit longer, I will have them available again. Yes, I can post them. Um, but just know that I'm not in charge of the postage prices. All right, so I've got four rivets. I'm going to do, well, actually, I might just do one on each. One on each will work. So we need two rivets and two rivet caps. And then... I'm going to come and get nice and close up here, right in the middle, and squish. Now if you've only got um, one rivet press and you get annoyed switching these back and forth, you could do this lot and the other lot I did at the same time. And I'm just going to push the rivets from the top to the bottom. Some people like to do bottom to top. It doesn't matter. So long as you've got double cap rivets, it won't matter which way you do it. It's a personal preference. Stick it under and squish. Repeat with the other side. So that is now like extra enforced. I feel much more confident about that. And I've now got less pieces in my bowl, which is always my plan. Okay. Pop that aside. And next up, we are doing 
the top band with the main front piece. Um, so this is the top here because the pattern has directions. Um, I really love this fabric. I need to stop staring at it though. It's weird. So we're going to stitch and back stitch. And back stitch. Trim off those tails. And then I am going to fold this down. And I'm going to top stitch along the fabric for a couple of reasons. One, because it's easier. And two, because it'll look pretty. And then that's going to help that sit flatter. And because I'm mainly on the fabric, I'm not really having any sticking issues, which is nice. But I'm still going slow just in case I don't feel like wrecking it because of my need for speed. Front, top band, main panel. Check. I don't know what we're up to next. I'm kind of just winging it. Let me check the pattern and then we'll get back to it all. I have decided I'm winging this the way I feel like it. Uh, the pattern is very well written. I just, I do things in my way. So, I am putting the bottom with the side that doesn't have the connectors against the front. And we're going to stitch it together. Back on a joining stitch length, like so. You know, make sure that the vinyl doesn't try and stretch on you either, because I'm seeing that being quite rude. Right. If you always trim the tails as you go, they won't annoy you later. So then again, I'm going to fold this down. Now this time I'm going to stitch onto the vinyl. I'll move Scully so I don't knock him. Now this is going to be nice and slow because again with the sticking. So I'm really kind of helping to push this through. Like so. That is now our front and our base done and looking fabulous. Let's go on to the back. So we have a bunch of pieces, back panel, back pocket, uh, and back band. They all say back, so obviously they're part of the back. We're also going to need some zipper tape, a kind of I think for the outside of the bag, I want to do the rose gold. Um, I'm also not going to do zipper tabs on the pocket panel. So for those that are looking for those, I have decided to have the zip go the whole way across the bag. Because I'm using vinyl uh, nylon zip, I can stitch over this. If you wanted to use a metal zipper, I do not suggest doing this. I definitely suggest the zipper tabs. Uh, that is obviously your call to do it as you will. So, we're going to take one of our lining pieces and one of our exteriors. So we're going to go lining right sides up, zipper right sides up. Yes, this zipper is too long. I will cut it in a minute. And then this one right sides down. So I just want to make sure I get... You can tell the right way on this fabric by this bit because the skulls sit up the right way. Because everywhere else, they're kind of all over the place. And the lining's definitely random, which I love. You don't have to worry which way is the top. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. Now again, you can definitely put your zipper tabs. You would do that before you do this, obviously, to make it long enough. I just really like to be able to get all the way into my pockets. And then I can just trim that off. And then that piece is long enough for the top. So we're going to do that too. Alright. I'm going to fold that over like that. And fold this one over. 
I am going to actually, I'm just going to top stitch the top one. So I'm just top stitching it an eighth of an inch. I just finger press that down because of my interfacing, finger pressing works fine there because it's the non woven heavy, it's my hefty. does have an official name, but hefty is way easier to say than Violin 1050F. Right, so that's one part. Now we need the other part. Oh, actually, I have a sneaking suspicion we're going this way. I like that. That would make a lot more sense. I should really read the patterns more. Um, all right, tabs, here we are. So it wants us to do tabs, which I skipped, which is fine. And then do that piece, which I just did. I just did that, so we're fine. I'm up to here. And then what does it want us to do? And then the back band goes on here, like this. Okay, so that makes sense. I don't need that bit. So I'm going to take the back band and then put that right sides here with the back of the pocket on the back. I'm just wondering where the back panel piece comes in, but I will deal with that in a minute. All right, so lining to lining and then back band again do we have a right way up we do it's there so yeah you, you sit it right way up for anyone that's super new to this you sit it right way up the way it's going to sit and then you fold it over so that you're going to stitch the bottom and that way it'll sit the right way up just for anybody that gets confused about that sit it how you want it to end up and then just flip it so that they touch and then you'll always have it the right way now you can clip this, obviously I'm not clipping it, um, practice makes you use less clips, the more you sew the less clips you'll require, except on curves, always clip your curves, or your exterior ones at least. Alright, so I'm now going to also fold this up and finger press it, and then I'm going to top stitch here as well, so I'm top stitching it an eighth of an inch. that and then before we stitch up the pocket we need to make sure we put our zipper pull on so crack the zip now I just want to put this kind of in the middle so it's out of the way I don't need to pull it all the way to the other side we want it in the middle so that we won't accidentally hit it with our needle when we're stitching everything together sometimes my zips like to slide me so in the middle and then we're going to take the pocket pieces the first thing I'm going to do is stitch the bottom so I'm going to line them up so this is flat like this and then I'm going to stitch the bottom of the zipper pocket away all the tails so now that it's closed at the bottom I'm gonna lay it flat and I'm just gonna baste so I'm gonna go over this zip here because I didn't use tabs um, if you are using tabs you would have had to put your zip on a while ago and then move it out of the way that's why another reason why I like this way and then I'm just gonna kind of stitch it there so this is also gonna hold the pocket down um, in the bag so it's not going to be one of those like movable pockets because it's now attached to the sides but by doing this I'm also creating it as a single piece now so it won't move the zip can't open the zip can't come off it's now much calmer 
I am just confused. I think back panel, was this an option too that I wasn't paying attention to when I cut it out? Because this is now the same size. And this is now the same size as that. Almost. All right, I'm going to go and actually read the instructions. But so far, it's looking good. I like it. This will either attach to here or attach to here. It could go either way. Let me read it up. And I'll be right back. I am back. I have read the pattern. That definitely helped. Makes more sense. So, we're going to take the part where we just made the zipper. And you're supposed to be on silent. My f well, computer, you set it to no noise. And apparently it just turns itself off whenever it feels like it. So rude. Alright, so I'm going to put some double-sided tape up here. And then we're going to fold it down so that there's no raw edge. Like that. So now we have no raw edge. This is going to be set up to line up the bottom like this. No, that's even. I thought it was crooked, but it's not. Alright, so I am going to now baste all of those layers from the zip to the zip. Uh, but leaving this still flappy because we have to put our other things in there. So, I'm just going to line this up. Start here at the zip. Base all the layers together. Like so. And then stop again at the zip. A little bit of a back stitch, not super fast, we're basting. Uh, and then I'm going to take my base and line it up along the bottom here. Now you might want to clip this because we're starting to get thicker and we've got hardware that's in the way and stuff. Like that, right. So we're still in our joining stitch length. We're going to use the correct seam allowance. Seam allowance is everything, guys. So I'm going to stitch that together. It's going to help my cores in a second. I have a plan. And then I'm going to fold this down and top stitch. Move Scully so I don't hit stuff. Move the hardware so I don't hit that either. And now I'm going to go nice and slowly. No, nope, something just snapped. I can hear it. That's a new one for me. Hmm. I always like to re-thread with a fresh end. Apparently it's going to give me grief. So, when this happens on my machine, if you hold your tails, and I have to wrap them around my finger so that it holds them properly, now they can't retract and mess up my day. So I'm going to stitch along here. I'm really helping push that through because, again, with the sticky. Alright, so now we're going to attach the handles and the straps. So that's what this little gap is for, so that we can stitch those in and under there um, so everything holds better, which makes more sense now that I've actually done it. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to face this towards me, and because I've already put these on, I'm going to flick up the hardware. I'm going to go down through here, and then up through my strap connector. And I'm going to want these pretty long so that things don't annoy me. So, and then lay it like that. And I'm going to do the same with this one. Now, in her pattern, she didn't put these on first. But I already did that, so this is the solution. So again, we're going to go up. Up one side. Down the other. Like so. And then, because I'm lazy, we're just going to do that whole find the centre thing that I always do, clip it, 
Well, she has all the uh, measurements, uh, but I'm just going to. So I want that there. Oop, except that's not even. So you want to make sure, the idea of this is that we are going to stitch so that you won't see the stitches to hold these in place, uh, but it's going to look neat from the top. And the fun thing is, is you can adjust this. You can fold this down as much as you want, depending on how much of that back panel you actually want to be seen. Just for funsies. All right, so then we're going to bring up these. So you want to make sure there's no twists. And then I am just going to shove those in the wrong way like that. And so that way they will be a correct strap. With that in mind, I am then also going to clip this down like that. Oh, my brother's ringing. Hold on a second. I'm back. Sorry about that. Uh, my brother doesn't call me very often. I thought it might have been important. It was not. All right, so I have clipped them both. And then I've just laid this back up to make sure that it looks good. Now, if you want to, you don't have to do this bit, but I'm just going to draw with a chalk marker where it's going to be seen to to make sure that all the rest of the stitches are now going to be under that mark that's an optional thing you don't have to do that so now i just want to stitch the handles down in any way i see fit you could literally back stitch back and forth all the way across there so you could swivel you know what? i'll show you two different ways so you can go there and then come on an angle down here Needle down, obviously, because we need to pivot. And then come back. There's no real rhyme or reason to this, but this is an easy way. Right, they are now attached. Backstitch, trim it off. So that is one option. And because nobody's going to see this, I can do two different options on one bag. The other option is... Again, I'm going to start where we won't see the stitches. Needle down, and then I'm going to go diagonally to the bottom, like this. And then we're going to pivot and go along the bottom again. And then diagonally up. So do like a giant X. So they are the two options with which you can stitch these down, because you don't see it. So it doesn't matter how messy it looks. I know that sounds tragic, but it's true. Now that it's stitched, I can take off all my crazy clips. So these are the two options. Uh, they are both equally as fine. Doesn't matter which one you choose. Then we're going to fold this up and top stitch that down. And now you don't see any of my mess. The pattern does it a different way. Um, with the... With the um, things so in the pattern these aren't attached yet but again because I put the rivets in already we had to do it this way which is fine one day when I get time I'm gonna pick one of my patterns and show you like four or five different ways to sew the same thing you do what works for you right so now we're going to, again, trim those tails, make sure the needle's up so I'm not going to wreck anything. And now, look what we've got. Ta-da! Starting to look cool. And then the straps, so the straps will come over like that. Oh, I really like this combo. I'm enjoying this fabric. Another thought I had with my slip pocket is I actually don't want a big one. I want, like, some little ones. So... Take your phone, if you're making the bag for yourself, take your phone, stick it in, and then measure like a quarter inch past where it ends. Take your phone out, obviously so you don't damage it, and then stitch upwards. So that that is the perfect size phone pocket for you. Then you can go next to that, and I can do this one, and get a pen and put a pen in this next pocket. So we're going to put it like this, 
I'm going to put my thing right next to where it'll be and then take the pen out so again we don't damage our needle and then stitch up and so now I have a pen pocket and the perfect phone pocket so everything kind of has like an official home and you can do it from either end so you could have done it from that side or this side didn't matter but there you go also when doing your first pocket you need to remember your seam allowance uh, so that's probably no longer a phone pocket. It is more like a snack pocket. And then this side can be your phone pocket. Either way, doesn't matter. You could also put the pen pocket in the middle, have two even pockets. World's your oyster. Go for gold. Oh no, let's hope go for, go for gold doesn't come back. I used to say that a lot. No. Nope. Ah. Oh, that looks so cool. Sorry, I'm getting overly excited. It's fine. So we're going to take our lining pocket and I am making the bag differently to the pattern. Uh, so in the pattern they crack the zip, bend it down and have it out of the seam. However, I don't mind if it's in the seam for this one because it's not a floating kind of, because it's at the end of the bag and at the top of the bag. There's no kind of floating panel so it doesn't matter if we don't see the end. So I'm just making my own life easier by not doing that at the end. But you definitely can if you want to. And then I'm going to measure with a ruler. Where's my awesome mini ruler? I have a little one by five inch ruler that I got sent in a swapsy, and I swear to God, I love it. Except I keep using it and not putting it away. So I'm going to measure from the end. And then... I'm going to bend this down so that the zipper will not be in my seam allowance. So I bend it under and then clip it in place. You can do either or, doesn't actually matter. While I'm at it, I'm going to separate the zip completely, which horrifies some people. And then we're going to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction. So I'm going to start, I'm having this one next to me because it's an easy way to remember. And then I'm going to start, so this one clip to the outside. So I'm going to clip to the outside of this side as well. And that means that when we join this, it's actually going to go together. And sometimes it's easy to lay it out all in front of you. I don't think I've ever done this in a video. I've always done one side and then the other. So I thought it might be fun to do it this way. I'm trying to teach different stuff. So again, with the ruler, line it up at the edge, line it up, bend it down and under, clip in place. Ta-da! Then we're going to pick a side, any side. I'm going to pick my back side first. So the back's going to be trickier because I'm going to have to pull these out of the way, which is fine. It's just going to be that little bit trickier. So this zip is ending to this side. So I actually think I want the same zip to end on the same side. So I'm gonna put this end, right sides together, and sandwich all three. Now in her pattern, you make the interior and the exterior and slot them together and top stitch it. I'm gonna do mine this way. You do not have to do it this way. Please don't think that I'm telling you that. This is just how I've decided to build the same bag. Oops. We will get the same result. It will still like look like the same bag in the picture. It's just a different way to construct it is all. Now you want to make sure that that bit of zip is definitely down out of the way. Very important. I'm just going to pop this over there so it's not in the way while I stitch this. Now this is the tricky side so I wanted to make sure I did it first. I am also going to start stitching in from the edge. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm just going to make sure that's down out of the way. So we're going to stitch. We're going to back stitch. Shocker, I know. Then the edge of my foot, because my foot's relatively skinny, is going along the edge of the zipper tape. Now it's all bulgy and stuff here, but that's because of all of our straps and handles which is again why I'm stitching slowly so that we don't wreck anything. And then we're going to backstitch. And 
cut off all the tails that you can see. Because as always, I miss some. So now you should have a zip that is in between all of this. And I'm going to fold the seam allowance towards the main body and then top stitch it. I'm not top stitching the lining. That is an important factor. Um, or your, your ends will look wonky later when we sew the bag. So you just want to top stitch the seam allowance to the exterior like this. See, my brain can't help it but make car noises. Poor brain. It's losing the plot. Okay, one side is done. We're going to grab the other side. Do the same thing. Right sides together. And then we just need to add this piece into that piece. If you need more clips when you're joining it together, by all means, grab some more. There's no magic number of clips that I use. It's whatever I grab and feel like. I also want to make sure I am stitching from the top. Or like this. And back stitch. So again, we want to make sure that this is tucked under, like so. And trim the tail. Trim. And so again, we're going to fold this so that the seam allowance is towards the main body. And we're going to stitch this slowly because we're on the slippery stuff. Or the sticky stuff, sorry, not slippery. It's the opposite of slippery. Therein lies the problem. So I'm making sure that that's folding under, so I'm stitching it down. It helps everything to sit nicer. That's why we stitch it down. It's not just to look pretty. It's not just to have this decorative top stitch. It's to make sure that this sits flat and doesn't mess with the zipper. So it is an important step, even if it is tricky. Please try not to skip it. Tails. Look at all these tails. All right, so this is now what you should have. A really long strip of stuff. And you should have some zipper tails. Now that we've stitched it and top stitched it, I'm going to pull this down as far as it'll go back onto itself and use a clip to hold it out of the way. Because I don't want to stitch this into the seam. It's going to wreck my day and potentially wreck the zip. And then I have to unpick so much more. So I clip it close to the tail. There's no point in clipping it here because it can fold back again. So you want to clip it so that that tail can't shift. You just need it out of the way. Then we're going to pick a side, any side, and I'm going to clip and stitch that whole side together. So the first thing I want to do is where the zip is, where the outside meets the lining, I want to line that up perfectly. And I'm going to use a lot of clips to hold this in place. If that's crooked, your bag's going to sit crooked. It doesn't matter about these ends. We can trim and fix any issues that you've created accidentally. But where the lining and the exterior meet, you want to make sure that it's super together, even organized. So lots of clips in that area. Cool. Then I want to come down to where the accent meets the fabric on the front and the back, and I want to clip that together. You're going to concentrate. You're not just going to go from one end to the other. You are likely to get a shift. It is important. So I, now that I've done those two important parts, I can add some clips in the middle so it doesn't move around. And then I can come to the end and clip the end together. Like that. This side, not so dramatic. Uh, you just line it up, clip it together. If... For any reason, one side's a bit longer than the other. We can trim it down later, so don't even worry about that either. The important parts are where the zip 
and the lining meat or the exterior and lining and then the vinyl accents. So you start on those two, then we're going to flip it over and do the same to the other side. So I'm going to start at the zipper. I'm also going to make sure that the zipper on this end, because I've put it in the seam, I want it to face the lining. So it's going to go, when you zip it shut, it's going to curve in and down and out of the way. Otherwise, you may not have this problem if you didn't put it in your seam, but I'm just telling you, if you did, that is what we need to do. Add lots of clips in that area to make sure it's held. Then we're going to, again, come down to the bottom vinyl accent section, like so. Add some clips in between, as many as makes you comfortable, and then come to the bottom and then line that up. Then we can do the lining. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to box out those corners in the lining. Otherwise it won't fit. We're going to deal with that in a minute. So, I always like to start vinyl, or oh, exterior to lining because exterior is always thicker and it's always easy to go down a hill in your machine than try and go up a hill. So I always start at the thickest part and then work my way down. So instead of back stitching, I'm going to just do a couple of stitches and then go back to the start and do it again. It's the same thing as back stitching without actually doing it. Now I'm going slowly for a couple of reasons. One, it's bulky. I don't want to snap a needle. Two, I really don't want to get my fingers. So right now, that there was the center point where the lining meets the exterior. Lining is always also easier to stitch, it's more pliable, doesn't misbehave as much. Right, one side. Then flip her over, still starting from the exterior where the bulk is. Move the clips as you get to them. Clips away and backstitch. Now it's only half as big. We are winning. Now we're going to box the corners. So, how I box corners is I stick my fingers in, stretch it out, and then you're going to try and get it straight. Now, this is going to be trickier because it is sticky. Box it out, clip it down. I didn't put base stabilizer in this one because uh, this vinyl's got enough going on with that. So again we're going to line that up, clip her down. I'm using two clips because it's just short. Trim that out of the way, and so now I'm going to stitch them. Shocker, I know. Stitch. You want to make sure that we're doing some form of back stitching at both ends. And I just ran out of bobbin thread again. Oh, I was so close. There it is, there. Right, in future, I need to remember to wind some bobbins. I was just very excited to do this video this morning, so I didn't really get there. So, I'm going to wind a bobbin, and we'll come back, do that, and do the end, and then we're good. Give me a minute. Bobbin is done. So, we're going to now stitch this end. Shocker, I know. My brain can't help the sarcasm sometimes, guys. I do apologise for that. I hate 
back stitching on vinyl with this machine. It's not really designed to be sewing vinyl like it does. It's just a champion. Um, so it does. All right. I need to do one inch. Actually, that's not going to work. So, oh, I could just do that. So that's a little uh, seam allowance mark. It's irrelevant. I'm about to cut it off, uh, but it's so I can use my template. So now I've got seam allowance on both sides. I can work out what I've got to cut out. So I'm going to take my cornery template, uh, which I haven't yet put on the um, website. I will do that. I promise. So it's going to go to there and I'm just going to draw. It's not exactly a square. It's more like a rectangle because of the seam allowance thing, but you get the idea. Line that up and that up. And that's my seam allowance to box the corner of the lining. Actually, I can probably sew all the way along here. I'm going to sew to there. I'm going to leave the line open so that that's where I can turn through. I know this seems like a big waste of time that I just did that, but watch why I did it. So now I sewed up to the line and then I'm going to cut that out. And then I'm going to again cut this out. And because I sewed up to the line, I'm not wrecking any of those stitches. Because here on the downside, I'm going to want to reinforce that so it doesn't come open in a minute. Which is why I did it the opposite way on the bottom because I was allowed to. So again, just here, I'm just going to do a little bit of back stitching over those original stitches so that they don't come undone. It's not very much. It's like quarter of an inch. It's just to seal the stitches so that when I box it, it doesn't misbehave. But you do want to trim off all of those tails before you get there. The other option is, is you could have cut that first, you could have clipped it all together, cut it out, and then boxed it. Whatever floats your boat. Oops. So, first thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull both of these and then line up that center seam and push one in each direction so it sits flatter. If you put them both in one direction, you're going to have a thick side and a thin side. So you want to flatten them out as best you can. Lining is always more pliable, which is great. So we're going to stitch and back stitch, go again, like that. And then get rid of all the tails in the way. So now with the other side, you need to see on the bottom, you need to see which way you pushed that. Because on the other side, you need to push it the same way. Otherwise, it's going to sit weird. So here it's pushed to my right. So this side's also pushed to my right. You can add clips if you need to then readjust under the machine. Flatten it out. Seam allowance. Back stitch. Off we go. Like so. Trim the tails just so that they're not annoying everybody, mainly me. Now I've left a gap in the bottom, uh, but it's not, it's a big enough gap that I should be able to turn the bag through, but I sewed in far enough from here that it won't be painful to try and stitch up in a minute. So I'm gonna grab a corner. I'm gonna push so that I can grab it and make it talk like a puppet. The puppet part's very important. It makes it more fun to have to birth a bag because I know a lot of people dread it. So if you make it talk like a puppet, it'll make you feel better. I know I seem crazy. I probably am, but I promise it works. And then we're just going to slowly, I'm going to actually squish the bag so it becomes more like a cylinder. And then just pull the lining over my weird cylinder. And that way I'm not trying to pull the vinyl because the vinyl is obviously the hardest part. So if I'm trying to pull the vinyl through the hole, it's going to be harder than just slipping the lining over. How much easier was that? All right. 
and a push out the corner and then push out the other corner. There's like a weird white thread that'll be off the fabric because I'm not sewing with white. You want to push out the corners now rather than later though because it is definitely easier. Then I'm going to come up and just push the sides with my hand. So I've got my hand like this and I'm just pushing that side to make it sit nicely. Remember how we lined it up? Look how lined up that is. This is why we do these things. It's the little things that make me so happy. Yes. Right. So now we're going to put our hand into the zipper pocket, grab the base, and then pull the lining back through the zipper pocket. But it's just the lining, so we don't have to pull all of that through the little hole and stress your zipper pocket out unnecessarily. Then I'm going to start where we left off and then just stitch the bottom closed. Nobody will ever know you did it that way. Push the lining back in and then we're going to stitch the zipper pocket closed. So I'm going to just tuck those in. If you have fabric tags, here's a really good place to put them. Uh, people are less likely to pull them out because it won't annoy them as much in a zipper pocket, which means your tag will always be on there. I know personally, if I have a, bag, a tag sticking outside of a bag, I will cut it off. And then I'll forget who I got the bag from. Well, I used to. I don't really buy bags anymore. I make them. But the principle still remains. If you're going to do a tag, put it like out of people's way where it won't annoy them, and then they won't cut it out. And the zipper pockets are a really good spot for that. So then, we're nearly done. Just pushing the lining in, making sure that everything's sitting lovely. Which, for the most part, it is. So now we just need to put our zipper on. Oh, it looks good. I'm very happy I chose the pink. So I'm also going to put a zipper end. If you don't have zipper ends, uh, you can just do like a rectangle of fabric. So however wide your zipper tape is, cut double that in length so you can fold it over and it's a square. Or you cannot do that, but that's how I do it. On the other hand, I now sell zipper ends, so I tend to just use them because they're pretty. It's all about pretty. Alright, so then again we're going to line up the zip. Now because I don't remember which tooth side was first, I'm going to have to zip it all the way up to check that it is even and glorious. And mine just goes into that corner, but I can just put my finger in there and kind of push it out and it will sit pretty well. See? But I didn't have to do all the bendy bits, I just kind of skipped it. You can't skip it on everything, uh, but this you can. Zipper panels that sit within a bag can't be skipped. You have to bend the corner of the zips. But when it's in a top like this, it's fine. Alright, so that's all done. Zipper's on. It's even. I don't have any bulging. Now I'm going to, firstly, I'm going to get a lighter and melt this end. I don't want it to fray. Now some people put uh, glue in their zipper end. I don't because it's messy and there's no kind of jaggedness on the inside for the glue to attach to anyway. Uh, but for some people, peace of mind is peace of mind, so they do put the glue. It's optional. Then I'm going to shove this. So what I just did is I folded both the sides of the zip into the center to create a triangle on the end and then shove it on. I'm literally shoving. There is no niceties about that. I'm shoving it until it hits the end. Then I'll take the little screw like so. This is like a self-drilling screw. The end is very pointy so that it can so, uh, go through. My zipper, uh, my batteries are nearly dead on this so I'm gonna have to manually twist it. This I got off eBay. It was about 30 bucks. It takes AAA batteries I think and you get like 20 different ends. I only use one because this one end fits all the bag making um, stuff. All right, it's nice and smooth and flat. So just run your finger over it so it's not sticking out. And we're done. How cute is that? 
It's got a little back pocket. So now that you've done this, you can zip it up and move it over. And that say from the back, the zips both line up together. And I like that. And then when you open it, the back zip is the other way, but that doesn't really matter. And it's also pink and kind of stands out. So there you go, guys. That is that bag made my way. Same pieces, just slightly differently put together. I hope that was educational somewhat, uh, and thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.